are you guys are probably wondering like how do you even get these jobs like how does it work so I have really worked my butt off for the last seven years of my military career to be able to get one of these AGR jobs so the first thing that I really feel like like you need to consider doing if you want to get an AGR job is yeah you can apply and bid on these positions but you really need to consider doing an ADOS position and that's another form of a full-time position with the guard only it's temporary um, I would consider doing it just to kind of get your foot in the door it also helps with another thing that I think you should do which is networking you really want to make sure you're talking to as many you really want to make sure you're talking to as many people as humanly possible so that way you're you become known people see you working in a temporary position and automatically are like dang like this this person's doing more than just their one weekend out of the month this is also how you can gain like mentorships if there's someone who's willing to mentor you i had multiple mentors from being on ados positions and they really helped to like lead me on the right path to know what I should be doing for my military career. You also need to make sure that you understand the boarding process. There's a whole regulation that covers the boarding process and if you don't know how to do that it's very going to be very difficult for you to get a job because there's a specific way it's not like a regular interview you actually have to go to a board to get these jobs. I also would recommend making sure that you have your application, your packet, they call it a packet. I would make sure that you have someone check over that, especially someone who's like a seasoned, a seasoned AGR soldier, someone who really knows what they're doing. Talk to your S1. They normally know what they're doing. That's like HR in the military if you don't know that. And the, they will help you to make sure you're getting all the right documents. You want to make sure you're following the job posting to a T. It'll have like a list of documents and like there's so many mistakes that happen with those packets like not including the right documentation or the most updated PQRs like there's just so many things that you could potentially mess up so I checked over my packet like 80,000 times and I gave it to other people to check over before automatically assuming that it was good and it would go through. I think I submitted like three different packets where they got kicked out just because of stupid little mistakes that I had missed. I also think it's smart for you to volunteer for outside organizations. This is really going to help you, especially organizations like I've talked about INGUS, the Enlisted National Guard Association. Organizations like that are where other members of the Guard go and communicate and network with each other on a civilian level and that is how you're really going to get your name out there. Another big thing that I did is I would, even if I wasn't on ADOS orders, I would go into the armory when I didn't have drill weekend, like during the week. If I had a day off of my civilian job, I would go into the armory and just like chit chat with the people who did work full time and I'd ask them if they needed help. I remember like a bunch of times I like helped move boxes, which like technically isn't you're not supposed to do that because if you get hurt, you're not on orders. It's, you, it's a very fine line, but even just going in and talking to them and just showing them that you care about the military and being there more than just one weekend a month. I don't know how many times I didn't even work full time for the guard and people would think that I did just because I was at the armory almost every day when I didn't have a job. Two more things that I really highly recommend that you do and the next one is so important. I did not realize how important this was until honestly like last year. I'm a very like clean person when it comes to social media. I know exactly what I can and cannot post. I do not post anything that I feel like is negative about myself nor do I feel like I conduct myself in a way that would cause my state to look bad or my unit or anything like that. And there were still things on my social media accounts that were looked at when it came to jobs that they were not okay with, which was shocking. I honestly, I had like a week of my life where I honestly cried because I was shocked that I was being judged like that for something so insignificant. Like, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, but 
I'm 27 years old. I also own my own home. I pay for my own vehicle and I, I pay for everything myself. I have student loans that I pay. I do all of these things. I, I have, granted I don't have kids, but I have two dogs that I take care of as well as two cats. Like, I'm doing the damn thing. And because I curse on my social media, because I am brutally honest on my social media, I'm brutally honest when it comes to my YouTube channel. And because I, if I'm having an alcoholic beverage, I'm not afraid to show that because I am 27 years old, I'm a grown ass adult and I can drink a drink at a restaurant if I want to. I can drink a drink at a club if I want to. Let's not, not forget to mention that I live in Kansas so it's not like I'm in Miami partying until 5 a.m. You know what I mean? Like. Clubs close here at two, and I'm the first person to leave. Like, I'm the girl yawning at the club. So, that being said, I was heavily scrutinized for my YouTube channel, and if you have been here for a while, you would know that there are a lot of videos that are no longer, not active, but no longer visible to the public on my channel, and that is because I had when I started really bidding on AGR jobs, I had my mentors and people that I trusted coming to me telling me like, well I heard from this person and this person that there was just questionable things on your YouTube channel. And I was like, what? Like I would never, I would never do anything to jeopardize myself, my family, my career, the military like I am such a patriotic person so that was like it really hurt me um, because this is a hobby to me so I feel like you can tell in a lot of my videos that I strategically pick the way I talk about certain things and do certain things and that is simply because I have made it into the AGR world and it was hard for me to get in because of the following that I have on this platform um, the rest of my social media is like fine, like my Facebook is only for my military friends and my family. Um, my Instagram is obviously for you guys. I don't post anything, like I'm not out here like posting porn on, on there. You know what I mean? Like I, I just really, really want to emphasize the point that it is almost better for you if you're going to apply for one of these jobs, especially if it's not at the unit level, um, I wouldn't even be on social media. When I applied for the job that I have now, I'm fairly certain I have my Facebook completely deactivated. Not, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a bad person, like, and I don't post, I don't even post anything like politically driven or anything because I don't want people to perceive me the wrong way. So it really stinks because I am one of those people that I'm like, I don't, I don't give two craps what anybody wants to say about me, think about me, do whatever you want to do about me. But if it's messing with my money, then I have to be, I have to be cautious of that. So if you're out here getting wild, get crazy, get wild. Like if you're out here on any social media, do it like they will find you. And, and, and yes, you may be applying for a job at like the lowest level, but the people that are looking at your packet and looking at you as a person are at a very hot, like a higher level and people talk. Like that's one of the biggest things like in the National Guard is like everybody, people know more shit about me than I know about me. And that's just me keeping it real. So we gonna get off, we gonna get off this topic because you know, that's a video for after your girl's retired, you know what I'm saying? Like I can't really, but we moving on. The last recommendation that I have for you guys is to be yourself, be yourself. Be confident in yourself. When you walk into that board, like, do you, boo. Like, do your thing. Be respectful. Can I get, can I get some focus up in here? <laughs> do you, 
Make sure that when you walk in there, you have the confidence to like, this is why I'm here. This is what I will give you. This is what I can bring to the table. Like y'all cannot sit at the table without me at it. Cause I, I bring something that's so great that you need it in order to sit down. Like make sure you go in there. Don't be too cocky, you know, like don't act like you know everything because clearly you knew, but make sure that you own it when you go in there to that board and, and smash that thing. So that's really all I have to say. Just remember, AGR is the best kept secret in the freaking military. Who, like, why would you not want the benefits of an active duty soldier as a National Guard or Reserve soldier? I get all the same benefits and I still live 20 minutes away from my parents. Like, I still live at home. Anyways, I'm about to go. This video is long, 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 long. And don't forget this is a series. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Drop me a comment in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed by now, make sure you subscribe. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.